C-Corporation Constructive Distributions Problem 2. Chile is the sole shareholder of Pepper Corporation. For the past five years, Pepper has reported little or no taxable income as a result of paying Chile a salary of $500,000 per year. During a recent IRS audit, the revenue agent determined that Chile's educational and business experience and his time devoted to managing Pepper justified a salary of only $200,000. Thus, the agent recharacterized $300,000 of payments from the corporation as a dividend. Assume that all dividends are taxed to the individuals at a 20% rate. Calculate the additional income tax liability for Pepper as a result of this constructive dividend treatment. Assume Pepper's marginal tax rate for the year in question was 34%. Ignore any payroll tax consequences. What are the consequences to Chile as a result of the constructive dividend treatment? Calculate the tax liability change. Assume a 37% marginal tax rate and ignore payroll tax. Determine the total impact on Treasury tax collections as a result of this audit finding. All right, there's a lot going on in this problem. It's a, it's a very long problem, but really, this is like more of a conceptual problem. Yeah, we're going to have to do some calculations, but I'll, I'll help you manage, make it easy. So we've got like three different questions to focus on. And the first one just says, and, and, and go back over, you know, stop and re-listen to the facts. The idea here is that the corporation, we've got a C corporation here, right? Remember that if we're not, we've got Pepper Corporation. If you don't know what kind of corporation it is, C corporation, S corporation, it's a C corporation unless it says S corporation. So we've got a C corporation and the idea here is the higher the salary that's paid to Chile, we're reducing taxable income and that's going to reduce tax that paid. So we want the salary to be as high as possible, but there's, there's a catch to that. And that is, it has to be considered reasonable. The salary must be reasonable considered reasonable by the IRS. So the idea here is, you know, let's say you've got a closely held business where you've got a parent that is like the main shareholder and they hire children. They're also shareholders and the child never went to college, but the, the, you know, they're a business manager or an accountant or a lawyer or they're doing legal work or they're doing accounting work and they don't even have the requisite education or experience. And you're paying them, you know, a million dollars a year. And the idea is that the IRS will come in and they'll question just like they did here. And they said, they, the IRS is basically saying, well, Based on educational background and business experience, we only think that Chile should be paid around two hundred thousand dollars. And you're saying, well, how exactly do they calculate that? They basically look at like the nas uh, National Labor Labor Bureau and you know those departments, and they kind of get an idea of kind of okay what the averages are. It's kind of difficult for the IRS to do this, you know, because it's so subjective. But they do have averages and stuff they use. And of course, if it's close, right? If it's 200,000 is the average and it's 250, they're probably not going to say anything. But if it's 200,000 and they're doing $500,000, that's when the IRS comes in and questions it. So it's basically a $300,000 amount that the IRS is recharacterizing. So the idea with the IRS is that they basically come in and say, okay, well, you need to basically pay us additional taxes, corporation, because you lowered your income by $300,000 and now it's going to be raised by $300,000 and now you're subject to a higher amount. So in, in question one, it's saying calculate the additional income tax liability for Pepper, the corporation, as a result of this constructive, this constructive dividend. Okay. And the idea here is because we're raising or increasing the taxable income. And how are we increasing taxable income? Because remember, taxable income is going to be gross income minus deductions. So if the gross income was a million dollars, let's say gross income was, you know, a million dollars and or let, me, let me make it even simpler. Let's say gross income was 500,000. That's like their sales and stuff. And let's just say that this is the only deduction. It's very unreasonable to assume this. Let's say the only deduction that was during the period of time was the salary, was Chili's salary. Unlikely, there's obviously going to be other things like inventory and other, you know, cost of goods sold, things like that, depending on the type of business. But there's going to be rent, things like that that go into it, computer costs, expenses, of course, you know, depreciation, things like that as well. But just to make it as simple as possible. So if we have the $500,000 salary, gross income $500,000, deduction $500,000, just assume this. I know we don't know this from the facts. That would bring our number to zero. The IRS is coming in saying, okay, well, no. 
your gross income is 500,000, that's correct. But your deduction should only be, well, if we're lowering the salary to 200,000, you only get $200,000. And that means that your taxable income is now $300,000. So your taxable income goes up by $300,000. See that? So this, that's all it's asking. It's just asking, okay, calculate the additional income tax liability for the corporation, regardless what the numbers are right here. Even if you, regardless what you use, it's going to be an increase of taxable income by $300,000. We're also told to assume that Pepper, again, the corporation's marginal tax rate for the year was 34%. So if we take 300,000 times 34%, we get the additional tax that would be owed due to this change. And that's going to be $102,000. So the IRS basically sends a bill to the taxpayer saying you owe an additional $102,000 because you did something wrong. You reported an income wrong. Please send us a check for $102,000. That's basically what they would do. Okay. At least for that one year. So that's, that's all they're asking. The first question, what is the increase to the corporation? So it's going to be $102,000 increase in taxes. And again, we don't have the amount of gross income or the sales amounts or deductions, the total deduction amount or total taxable income. It doesn't matter though. You can just kind of pick numbers. I like to always pick something where the taxable income results in zero and it makes it simple because then you can just say, okay, well, taxable income went from zero to 300,000. So 300,000 is the amount. And that's how I would recommend that you do this type of analysis. So that's the first question. The second question says, what are the tax consequences to Chile as a result of the constructive dividend treatment? Calculate the tax liability change, assume a 37% marginal tax rate and ignore payroll tax. Okay. So now here's another issue is that when Chile receives this $500,000 salary, okay, when Chile receives a $500,000 salary and we're ignoring payroll tax, we're ignoring that, basically Chile is paying 37% taxes. Now, Chile is paying 200, paying 37% on a $200,000 salary. So 37%. And in addition to that, also this $300,000 difference is now treated as a dividend, okay? Because we're told that the agent recharacterized $300,000, I'm up here, as a dividend. And then we're told that, assume that all dividends are taxed at the individual rate of 20%, so a special dividend rate of 20%. So this is basically better, this is bad for the corporation, but better for the individual chili. That's basically what the issue is. So now it's going to be 300,000 times 20%. And that's how we calculate. So what we do is we calculate 500,000 times 37%. Okay. 500,000 times 37%. Well, actually look at this. Look at the difference here. So before it was 500,000 times 37%. After is 200,000 times 37%. And then 300,000 times 20%. So you can obviously see the right side is going to be less. The after side is going to be less. And the question is asking, what is the change to Chile as a result of this constructive dividend treatment? So the salary being recharacterized now is not $500,000 of salary, but $200,000 of salary and $300,000 of dividend, which is a lower rate. Well, if you look at this mathematically, you have $500,000 salary before tax at 37%. Now you've got $200,000 salary at 37%. Well, that's still at the same 37%. So what's different? The incremental or different $300,000 is now 20%. So we can calculate the difference here. You could, you could do it two ways. You could take 500,000 times 37%, get that number. And you, you could also take 200,000 times 37%, get that number plus the product of 300,000 times 20%, get that number, add those two together on the right side, and then compare the numbers. Or you could just take this 300,000 number and multiply it by the difference between the 37% number and the 20%. So basically 300,000 times 17%. Because again, that's what's differing, right? The th just for this portion. Because the 200,000 at 37%, that's still the same percentage. So that doesn't change. What does change is the 300,000 has been recharacterized now at a lower rate. So it's really 300,000 times 17%. And when you take 300,000 times 17%, you get $51,000. Okay, so it's $51,000. $51,000. So the 
taxes are going to decline. We're going to have a decline or a savings, okay, tax savings by Chile of $51,000. Okay, this is a dollar sign here. This is a 51, sorry. This is 51,000. So let me rewrite that at the top. So number two results in a $51,000 tax savings to Chile. Okay. So that's what it's saying. Again, you could calculate it two different ways. You could add up or you could, you could look at what the tax effect would be at 500,000 times 37%, which is what it was before versus what the taxes will be now where you do 200,000 times 37%, 300,000 times 20%. You basically get those two numbers, add them together. And it's going to be less than um, 500,000 times 37% by $51,000. That's what I'm saying. So then the last question is determine the total impact on treasuries tax collections as a result of the audit finding. So basically what it's asking is, okay, corporation has to pay additional taxes of $102,000. So in number one, taxes went up. The additional tax liability for Pepper Corporation went up by 102,000, right? So in for this one, we went up by 102,000 for the corporation. And that's what we found in number one. In number two, Chile's taxes went down, decreased by $51,000. So basically just want to know net, what's the result? What's the result here? Okay. Now, this is where things are a little interesting. Back in the problem, and I probably should have highlighted this earlier, I apologize. We were doing everything on a year, right? For the year. See that? For the year. And then also I want to know um, for the year, basically for number one, number two. That was the focus. So for the year here in number, in the last question, number the third question, three, that's also going to be, we take one increase of 102,000, a decrease of 51,000. So the net effect is an increase of 51,000 for the year, but there's five years for the past five years. So basically we have to multiply this amount, 51,000 by five. And that equals an increase of $255,000. And that's the answer. That is the net change to the tax of, and in terms of taxes, $255,000. So I'll put that up here in the top, top right. So again, um, I, I, I circled the answer for number one. Number two is a little hard to see. Number three, the answer is for number three, again, the overall, determine the total impact. So by total, we mean all five years. That's the key. That's going to be an increase, an increase in taxes of $255,000, $255,000. All right. So I know there's a lot in this problem. I told you earlier, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not that difficult. It's more conceptual than more calculation. You don't have to do any time value money, anything like that. It's just showing you kind of like what the effect is where you have this constructive distribution, this recharacterization. Obviously there's going to be negative consequences to the corporation, positive to the shareholder, but usually what ends up happening is that the, in the net scheme of things, it actually ends up being worse because you want to lower because again, you want to avoid double taxation.